And so you have to actually, you know, um, make sure that your services are redundantly provisioned over multiple data centers, uh, such that if there's data center outages, you can still deliver your services to your customers. And all of these things are continuously on the minds of, of people that have to do software as a service. Um, and it is, of course, then that if you look at the Amazon model where we've, where we've given this task to, uh, to all these different teams, that when we did an analysis where all these teams were actually spending all their time on, that the majority of the time were actually spent on, um, on infrastructure matters, on keeping their services highly reliable by building new data storage engines um, and things like that. So about 70% of their time was spent in what we like to call undifferentiated heavy lifting, meaning the kind of work that you have to do um, to just keep your service running. And only 30% of the time is actually spent in innovating on behalf of the customer and making the service better. Um, and now this seems like, a, like in, in hindsight, it seems like that Amazon was not very smart in choosing that model. I think actually it is a traditional uh, enterprise architecture evolution pattern um, that you see at work here. Uh, there's a great book by Peter Weil from, uh, from MIT Sloan Business School about enterprise architecture that shows that this pattern is something that all companies that want to move fast go through. Yeah? It's just in sake of agility. You introduce redundancy. But the only way that you can really introduce this redundancy is to know that at one moment you have to take stock and look at what are what is the redundancy that you've introduced and then drop that into a shared services platform. Now within Amazon I I'm actually I would be happy enough to flip these two numbers around. Yeah, if thirty percent of the time engineers will be spending their efforts on doing infrastructure work and seventy percent on doing innovation. I think Amazon at the scale of Amazon and the complexity that we have there, that is probably the best we can achieve. If I talk to many of our customers at the web services side of things, then I hear from them that they're able to uh, achieve much better uh, cost savings, where they may be able to spend maybe only between 5 and 10% on actually managing resources, and they really can spend 8 to 90% of their time on building uh, you know, the real business value. Now, if you look at, um, so, so we were confronted with the fact then that, you know, we were spending all this time on, on this undifferentiated heavy lifting, and we made the decision to, uh, to take a very low-level cut in the infrastructure and virtualize that and drop then the services into this, this platform that all of our engineers could be using. So there were four particular areas, uh, three different areas where we started off with, uh, you know, compute, network or, or messaging, actually higher level, and the area of storage. So the first one, compute, turned into Amazon EC2 and the Elastic Compute Cloud. And the important, the important thing to realize with the, with the Elastic Compute Cloud is that there was one thing that we wanted to address. In the old model, where uh, engineers would be managing their own resources, physical servers, I believe we were really efficient. An engineer could ask for a server, and between six to seven hours later, the server, fully provisioned, would be handed over to him. But the pattern that we saw was that engineers would never release those resources again. Just in case, you know, they, if you would talk to them, they were holding on to these resources, because yeah, just in case they would need them later. So it was clear that six to seven hours, even though we thought that that was highly efficient, was not fast enough to deal with the uncertainty of needing those resources, getting those resources back later or not. So the decision we made that these resources should be, be able to allocate and, and release in a matter of minutes. And that's what Amazon EC2 became, you know, uh, access to virtual machines on, in a minute basis. So if you then look at the, uh, the messaging side of things, uh, there is quite a few places within Amazon where we use sort of workflow-style technologies. And Amazon SQS, a simple queue service, helps us there with providing the glue between workloads and number of EC2 instances that you have to run. 
Storage, however, turned out to be a much, much harder problem. Um, traditional Amazon uh, runs over two, ran over two different technologies. On one hand, relational databases, and on the other hand, uh, you know, simple key values towards PerkleyDBs or SleepyCat, as it's called now. Um,